whatever we've done about and with the oil production did not stem from the production. It was the time before the production. That galvanizes it depends on what preparation did we make towards producing the oil. So that why should we produce the oil in two ten? These are the questions we need to ask. And then what agenda did we have with the oil? If we go into that, then we'll be we'll see where whether it's helping. Definitely it will help because it will be answered. But where, what could we could we have done better? I wouldn't say more. I would we have done better if we properly prepared ourselves right for the oil. And then we also have to look at the paradigm within which this oil production came out. And that would then also inform us as to whether as a country, and I'm not talking about a party, I'm not talking about uh, an ethnic group or an area, whether as a country we need the right preparation for the oil coming out. I think wherever the weaknesses would be in the hopes we've had, it lies within the structure that was put in place at the very beginning. And I have always been saying it and haven't, um, haven't changed my mind, that we were in a hurry to bring the oil out, you know, without the right preparation. And I also don't blame that hurry that we were, mainly because of the nature of governance that we have in this country of uh, this competitive empty in terms of ideology but it's also competition for power and uh, you have to go to the ballot box so if you seem to have been doing all sorts of things you then use it as oh I'm the one doing this thing and therefore you seek people's, uh, people's power but besides that I think I don't think that we did the right preparation for it we allowed uh, how, how should I put it? We allowed internal in, the internal dynamics of our politics. You understand uh, to control uh, whatsoever uh, the the socioeconomics that we should probably have taken in place. You see, politics is nothing but the management of the economy in the interest of those who live in a particular area. Politics is nothing, nothing divine. If a group of people live in an area, right, the resources have a high, but the ways and means they survive and enhance their lifestyle. The management of it is governed. It's the man, the management of it is what is you may refer to as politics. Oh, this ideology comes because we think we will manage it better this way. Oh, but if you look at Ghana. We are basically an ideologically less, uh, ideology less uh, thing. Two, our politics is important. The arguments that we use is important. And therefore, I don't want to discuss going to the, because that's not the object of this. But it's, it's the bane of our problem that we are importing even our knowledge systems without going down to our own indigenous systems. So it doesn't enhance us as an indigenous people. But indigenous, it, it's rather, um, goes into knowledge hegemony. So the oil came, right? Should we have had a partisan approach to it or a non-partisan approach to it? You know? Two, um, should we have kept the oil as Suriname did, for example? They didn't allow the oil to go till they have mastered the oil culture. We were in a rush to do an oil, uh, what's the name of it? to put the revenue um, sharing in place. But we were not in a rush to do an oil policy. And a policy would have governed every law that we derive. So what the Ghanaians expect from the oil? What is in it for Ghana? This is, this is, I mean, the question boils down to it. What did we expect out of it and what is in it for us? And if we can't answer that, then we have a problem because it is what is in it for us that governs the thing. Right now, what percentage of the income made out of oil do we do we get as a people? So, but it's a money over you. That's you know, um, we didn't even define social responsibility till later. We we went into uh, what's the name of local content till later. Is it possible that we could have kept the oil and trained people as a as a for it till we were ready? So these are all ifs, the speculative, right? But the fact is that I personally don't think 
we prepared enough for the oil. And people say, or just as you asked much, much earlier about expectations, I, I told you that why shouldn't we expect? We've seen what oil has done to some economies. Saddam Hussein, after the war, when they bombed as a Saddam was able to lift Iraq up, Baghdad, he rebuilt it as a territory. I may call him a dictator, but at least he did that in this area, right? Look at, is it Abu Dhabi or Oman? These oil rich, look at what they have done with their societies and so on. Look at Gaddafi. I'm not talking about dictatorship, I'm not talking about the type of governance, is it? So when you look at these places, then you can say, oh, with a little bit of oil, They've done, they've done that much. And I always tell people, go and watch Al Jazeera's uh, French Connection. Go and study it. And look at a state like Gabon. And how they, they seem messed up. Why is it that Nigeria corruption has deepened so badly that it's now become institution? We are heading there. How much, when you hear some of the monies people steal, 22 million, 6 billion, it's frightening. And yet, Nothing is happening in there. You know, so the thing is that you have to study these things and prepare it. And we should have looked at the oil, not in terms of politics, but in terms of statesmanship. A politician looks at his, this, the next election. A statesman, just like Kwame Nkrumah, thinks about how we'll endure over time. So probably we didn't go into, into we didn't do enough thinking. And like, that's why I would say that the internal dynamics to all the situation was that we had one government which was just about to leave power. Another government was coming into place, right? And so on. Uh, how much did we get about it? How much royalties? Even that, did we have any control? Did we get into the argument? Because maybe when you look at the royalties, is it, was it worth bringing the oil out? Could we have haggled for more? But these are, and this affects most of our non-renewable uh, extractives, you know. They go and they are gone. To what extent do they make a change in our lives? I, for example, worry that oh, we build this road. The road lasts for 10 years. After 10 years, then what? We have to build another road? You can see a lot of our roads becoming damaged. Yes, we are seeing we are building roads. So, Nana, I mean, with all these valid points that you've made, and the point about the fact that the fundamental issue about how things are done hasn't changed, um, and we seem to be moving into the next phase um, of the, the production, which is because we, had, we know this oil will last about 20, 25 years. With that not changing, and with the people's so, expectations... So probably, probably what we should have asked ourselves, that this oil is for 20 to 5, 20, 25 to 40 years. What do what concrete things in both human and material resources shape of this country? What do you want to see in the 25 years? That will grow. It becomes a seed for growth, but not a growth that is stunted or a growth that is limited, but a seed that you plant and you can always water it and it, it grows. You know, so it's not uh, at the end of the 25 years. This is what we we'll want to see: the state of the country. You know, and so on and so forth. But these, this, this is a question that calls for deeper thinking, and so on. I mean, it's part of the absurdity of the economics, but we can't answer that one now. We take money, go and keep it in British banks, and so on and so forth. And after go borrow, go borrow from the same banks at higher interest rates, and we call the heritage fund. I mean, I don't disagree. I understand, but this, this calls for a rethinking about economics, you know, and so on and so forth. So I don't want to go into that kind of argument. But the most salient thing there is the fact that um, we, should, we should have done deeper work, plenty work. We were in a hurry. And rightly so, because of the nature of the politics we are caught up with. It limits us. You know, we don't use the best thoughts, we don't use the best material. And we're always in a hurry to prove to the people that we are doing something. Sometimes we have to prove to people that we need to stop and think as a country, as a people. So that's it. You know, I mean, like when I was in Rollins days, from 1992 to the year 2010, what percentage, it would be good for you to find out, what percentage of our budget was devoted to 
oil and oil oil and gas and various oil products. It will be quite interesting. The percentage of budget. And so if that could be taken out, for example, then what do we do with that then for the next 25 years, 25 to 40 years? Of course, we've discovered more. Has the paradigm changed? The only way oil could have benefited is not being taken away as raw materials. But when we start adding value to it, did we prepare for this at the beginning? It got to a time we have been flaring the gas, which is free. Because we're taking the gas of Talo. They are getting the oil. Una is getting the gas. Talo is doing the work. All that we had to do all our was to bring it down to right now it's in Atuabu. Right. And then we're selling it to Ghanaians. But of course, we've put an institution there. Sometimes they'll tell you that oh, uh, the government doesn't want to get it. But that Atuabu thing, I just hope they don't sell it tomorrow. Us, other kind of things that the state did have been sold.